Hello, everybody, and welcome to Local Chat, episode 40. Will's not here. He had to pull a last-minute audible. That's right. This is, I believe, one of only two episodes in which Will has not been here. I've missed plenty because of uh, vacations and work, etc. Chris, you've been on all 47 out of the 40 episodes. Is that right? <laughs> that, that seems pretty damn close at this it's point, Ian. Very accurate. Um, have I, have I, am, I, am I the most uh, common guest? I don't know. Other than I, you, I guess. I don't know that I count as a guest because, like, like the first You're couple, a episodes, yeah, the first couple episodes, we were like, I'll, "I'll be a guest," and then I was like, "Hey, Will, if if you don't want me to be on every step episode, I understand, but I want to be on every episode." <laughs> and he was like, "Okay," because <laughs> it's it's Will's project, basically. We don't have right. like definitive lines in Subpixel, but it's kind of like, "Hey, this is your project. We'll bounce ideas off each other, but this is this is your baby. This you is know? the Will zone." It's the will zone that's why he's not here he's been arrested hashtag me too uh <laughs> yeah those tweets had to catch up with him eventually i gotta get all like 25 episodes of him like harassing zach during the news theme i gotta get all that into one while he's not here uh Just gang up on him oh boy we've got an episode for you today we've got some crazy news stories we've got some games to talk about uh i'm so glad looking at will's list that we don't have to talk about RimWorld anymore. And by talk about, I mean, just <laughs> listen to it's like I look, I'm going to run him under the bus real quick. But we we had a discussion about how to make the podcast slightly more interesting. And part of it was you don't have to talk about every game you've been playing. It's more about discussing the game you've been playing. And then even yes, after that's that, that's why I don't write League of Legends on here, because nobody wants to hear that shit. Exactly. And even after that discussion every week, he brings up RimWorld for like three minutes and it's like, we're not discussing this. <laughs> you, you you were this close to having talking about RimWorld, though, because oh, my cursor was hovering over the play button on RimWorld two days ago and I, I didn't click it. I've been thinking about playing it, but a part of it is I don't want to talk to Will about it. And if I start <laughs> playing it... <laughs> He will he will sniff it out. I bet within like 15 minutes of me starting to play it, he will see it on my Discord or Steam status somehow and just start He'll harassing see it in your, in your eyes. He'll just know. Be like, hey, I have a really good Santa mod if you want to know. Um, so let me just um, our internal for our eyes only our eyes only doc. I'm just going to highlight this whole will section and it's gone. He's not on here. <laughs> Bye. Um, Chris. Let's kick it off. What well, have you been playing? Uh, yeah, I was called UL Ian. Um, I've been, <laughs> I, I, I beat uh, what is what might be one of the worst Nintendo first party games I've played. I was actually going to say it since Other M, but that's not first party. That's Team Ninja. Uh, what might be the worst Nintendo first party game I've ever played? Uh, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. You're playing the I've, Switch version? I'm we, playing. yeah, uh, Vic and I beat the Switch version. We did all the things, got the Hillian shield, yada, yada, yada. That game is fucking terrible yeah it has one of the worst control schemes in a video game even the switch version like like just to tee it up a little bit i bought this game i wanted to play this game i was like maybe it'll be a little bit better and i was in a spot where i was ready to play it and i got about two hours in and i said i'm done on the switch version and you were correct it's god i i'm trying okay remind me the it's you you're moving and it feels kind of like tank controls but to look you have to hold down left shoulder button and then you get the right analog stick to correct move the camera. yes you can you cannot manipulate the camera because oh. the camera button is the swing the sword button oh my god like i i appreciate them trying to remake this and i, I don't want to say remake but like remaster to update it a little bit they did not do enough period and uh, it was just very frustrating. I feel like I can never play this game now because of my very high standards and their piss poor remaster. A am I wrong in uh, this? I, I feel like I shouldn't touch it. Genuinely, I am willing to bet that the Wii version controls better. <laughs> I I have to believe. I have to believe that it does because it God. like it's just everything about it feels so bad. Like just moving the character, everything about it is so bad. That sounds about right. And like this, this came out on the fucking Wii. This didn't come out on the PlayStation One. Like it yeah. wasn't like we were just figuring out 3D environments. They had already made Wind Waker. They'd already made Twilight Princess. They knew what the fuck they were doing. Yeah, I will say I. It's a shame because I of the two hours I played, I was getting into the story. I did like some of the characters. I did like the art style, and I was starting to see some of that Zelda like puzzle dungeon stuff happening. But it, it was just there's too many obstacles in the way, you know, I genuinely think like 
almost all the things in this game are good, except for the core navigation and combat. But here's a little thing about Zelda games. Those two things have to be acceptable yep. for me to enjoy it because it's a lot of it. 100%. 100%. That's I, I feel like, uh, Chris, you are slowly joining the Ian Gibson School of Video Game Criticism, which is if there is at least one single thing that is so aggravating you cannot continue playing the game, then the game is automatically trash. Um, I... I, I, here's the thing. I, I, I never played it on the Wii. I, I went into this wanting to say people are wrong. Skyward Sword is actually good. Yeah. It's not, though. It's fucking bad. Yeah. And it should I, feel bad. I, I really want them to, in 10 years, on the uh, Switch 3DS XL New Plus game, to remake this game again and to actually fix the controls because I feel like it actually would be a great Zelda game if they actually fixed the controls i don't want them to i don't want just just make just just make a new game i don't give a shit every series needs a dead horse you know <laughs> yeah exactly like like seriously because e even like like fucking spirit tracks and phantom hourglass have people they're like they're actually good and i'm not gonna go play them to check actually yeah. I, I did play phantom hourglass on the 3ds and i recall being like that was actually not that bad um but I never played Spirit Tracks. Um, and like, I, I can live in a world where those people have their defenders, but like mainline 3D big budget Zelda games, one of them has to be the shit one. And yep. I think it's fine that we can all point at Skyward Sword and say it came out bad twice. <laughs> That's... Let it die. Oh my God. That's incredible. I didn't even think about that. It came out bad twice. That's. Yeah. A Nintendo game. Oh, speaking of numbers, though, it looks like you've got another game on your list here that you've been playing. Uh, yes. Hang on. My computer is being a pain in the ass. OK, um, they are billions. This is the game I played instead of RimWorld this week. Um, so for those of you who don't know what this game is, this is a zombie game. You you it's like a old old school Age of Empire style uh, strategy game, but it's like Oh, there's no multiplayer, not to my knowledge, at least. I'm almost certain there isn't any. I don't think uh, there it's is, just yeah. you versus versus billions and billions of zombies. And originally, when this game came out, I don't know, two years ago, um, right. it was it, it was just like you load into a procedurally generated uh, map and you build your base up and you try to last as long as humanly possible. And that was the whole game. And it was hard, but it was fun. And it was cool. Um, and then a, a while back, I have no idea when the fuck they did this. They did like a we redid the game. And mm -hmm. now there's a full campaign storyline thing with like playable missions like your Age of Empires 2s. Like when you do do, do like the all the little campaigns like Joan of Arc and shit. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, shit. OK, that sounds fun. I'll do that. And I've been playing it. And it is fun. That's good. I, I remember playing this game and I, I thought it was really good. It was just too much of there's a particular style of RTS that I don't like, which is kind of the like kind of like the Starcraft style where it's like you're going through a tech tree through the buildings that you are making and you end up having to do a little bit more micromanagement than you want to. And mm -hmm. that's that's nothing against the game. It's just that style of RTS I never really got into. And even they are billions being that style of RTS, I was still enjoying it. And it had a unique art style, great zombie hordes. Um, very british how's the campaign in comparison to the, the campaign's procedure? cool um so it actually has a you mentioned text trees it has a, a system where instead of like having your text trees in like in starcraft where you have to like build the mm -hmm. research thing in the game and then level up and yada, yada yada um there is like at the beginning all you you have like the base structures and the base units and every time you clear a mission on like this like map that builds out and that you can go in different directions like that which is all very well done. You get more uh, called empire points and you can use those to research shit in the tree. So it's like now the next time you go into a mission, instead of making the regular units, you can make soldiers who have machine guns instead of bows and arrows. Oh, that's pretty neat. That's pretty. So neat. it sort of like builds out where you can do more and more as the campaign progresses and they have different kinds of mission. So there's the standard mission, which is like the here's your base. You have an objective, which is like uh, get a colony to this size and kill this many zombies, for example. That's like a, a basic core mission. There's mm -hmm. also ones where you have a hero and you navigate through a place, usually like a ruin, like a like an old bunker or like a science center or something like that. And you basically have to like uh, clear room by room with just your one unit and like navigate and like play smart and like, you know, use the abilities. You have like grenades or whatever the fuck uh, very carefully and then clear the whole place out. 
And then there's like a sort of like tower defense thing, which is the least fleshed out by a, a large margin, which is basically like with a set amount of resources, build a thing and then hit start and the zombies are going to start coming. And you have to survive. Oh, OK, that's kind of cool. That one's probably the worst. Uh, the the I was very impressed by the ones where it's like take your little hero dude into an area and then do stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this game did not need to have that. And the fact that it did, I was like, well, that's like, that's extra work. And it's always a risky mission type for RTSs uh, where they kind of just yes, like yes. strip away. I don't want to say they strip away the strategy, but they strip away the multi units and have you control one unit. It's kind of a big, big game design gamble. They did it well. Also, some missions have other units you can find. Mm -hmm. um, and like you can like say for one, you save some guys from a prison cell and they're like, we're willing to help you. And then halfway through the mission, they turn on you. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. Because because I had saved goons before and they were like, well, join your, your colony. Blah, blah, blah. That's crazy. That's I, it was cool. I, I'm glad to hear that game. Like, like, I feel like it hit pretty big. I mean, not like Among Us big or anything, but it, it hit pretty big for an indie release. And I'm glad it had, a, it had a big like Twitch it. bait. Potential. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad they're adding to it and it's and it's doing well. Um, so this leads me to my next question. Is Guilty Gear, is that the fighting game? I, that's a fighting game. Okay. That, that's a punching game. What is what is Guilty Gear Strive? You've got it here on your list. Uh, Guilty Gear Strive is an anime fighter by the uh, our friends over at Arxis, uh, makers of the Blaze Blues and the Guilty Gears and Dragon Ball Fighter Z and mm. uh, whatchamacallit, I can't think of the other one right now, uh, Persona 4 Arena. Um, and uh, it's an anime fighter. It's it's but it's a good one. It's got good punching in it. Um, and I, I talked about it when it first came out on the show uh, and talked about like, yeah, it's good. Uh, and since then, I've put some substantially more time into it and actually like, gotten to practice characters and like see more of like, you know, what the game's got going on. Uh, and like Guilty Gear is no Street Fighter. Street Fighter has its formula down. It knows exactly what the fuck it wants to be. And it, it delivers on that 100 percent of the time. But Guilty Gear is like where where we're going for style over substance mm -hmm. and hoping that our style is so fucking high that it's acceptable. Um, and I think that on this instance, they, they managed to achieve that because they like guilty gear has ridiculous bullshit in it. Like the gears are a race of people, but also a level of technology, but also a religious fixture, but also like racism. And there's also the beasts, which are genetically modified humans, to, uh, sorry, animals who are uh, modified to being more like humans and better than humans. And it, yeah. it's all very complicated. And like there's like bitching guitar riffs and like over the top character design and stuff like so that. It's, it's a fighting game story. Got it. <laughs> yeah, and it's but like but like it it knows that like the 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 story the story of Street Fighter is fucking stupid. But uh, Guilty yeah. Gear is like, what if we took that and then just like added like fucking jets to that and just shot it straight <laughs> into fucking space? One of the fucking stages of this like one of like those maps in the background is a bunch of giant Buddha statues flying into space. Those Buddhas are spaceships, Ian. What? Do I have any what? idea how the fuck that factors into the story? No. <laughs> That's crazy. That sounds that um, sounds great though. Yeah, it's uh -huh. it's good. It's just a, it's a really solid fighter, masked in like the uh, masked in like the thing of like we're gonna be over the top for being the sake of over the Ooh. top, which is like hard to do well because mm -hmm. a lot of the time it comes off as like pretty cringy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a good game. Well, hey, that was I, one that I probably could have not put on the list because nobody cares about fighting games. But speaking of what you did need to put on the list, let's talk about Chris's RimWorld. Old school RuneScape! <laughs> See, you're a guest. You're a guest. You're allowed to come on with whatever BS game you want to talk about. I wasn't going to put this on until earlier today because it's something did worth worth note happened in the world oh. of RuneScape. I, saw, I think I saw something. I think I may know what you're talking about, but if not, uh, I'll bring it up at the end anyways. Group I, I, Iron Man mode is that's, out in that's, RuneScape. That's what I saw. So what is... I uh, Look, let me, let me preface this by saying that I saw a Reddit post... And if I'm understanding it properly, it was somebody saying, like, I really appreciated you guys doing group Iron Man mode. And it looked like they posted a screenshot of them having killed, like, a whole bunch of people and just stolen all their things or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that guy's great. Like, that guy on Reddit. Yeah, everyone's so mad yeah. at that guy. He's awesome. Um, yes. Uh, so group Iron Man mode. Uh, so you boot up runescape i'm gonna play runescape today you say mm -hmm. yourself um Ugh. you make a, a new character in the runescape fuck off uh you uh, at the end of the tutorial you're given two options regular ass runescape or iron man mode yeah. iron man mode is the same as regular runescape with the exception you are not allowed to participate in the player economy you cannot trade items 
You cannot like use gold to buy shit from other players uh, off the Grand Exchange, which is like a like uh, centralized trading yeah. hub that lets you buy from anyone in the game effectively. Um, in, in addition to a few other restraints, like you can't uh, you basically can't like piggyback off of like a raiding party and just get all the items or like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Some more minor things. The most thing is you, you can't trade. You can't cannot trade in an MMO. That's like the big thing. So so it forces you to play RuneScape in a very different way, where instead of like when you hit a certain level, okay, now you can just buy the next upgrade from the Grand Exchange. It's no, now you have to fucking go get the upgrade. And you can oh either make God. it your fucking self or go find some other way of getting Ugh. it in the game. You want to ruin Scimitar, you can either fucking get to 90 smithing to make it. Fuck that shit. Or you can go kill fire giants and hope they drop one. Jeez, that sounds like I... It depends. I feel like that is a great way to force you to interact with all of the game systems. Yes. And then but I, it, I mentioned it before on this show that yeah. um, RuneScape has a good thing of like it is designed with the grim reality that eventually your friends will quit RuneScape. <laughs> Which all MMOs should plan for that. All MMOs should plan for me being the last person Ugh. remaining in my group of friends playing this game. Boy, so what is Group Iron Man? Group Iron Man is an Iron Man mode. Same, all that same shit. But at the very beginning, when you when you make that account, when you wake up and say I want to play RuneScape today, you select a group of people. And mm -hmm. uh, you all make you all make an account together, basically. Um, and everyone has their own special account with it, with like their stats and all their shit and all that stuff. But the only exception is it's an Iron Man. You you cannot trade with anyone else in the world except your group of people. Oh, that's because I see in my head when I hear group Iron Man, I think, oh, it's going to be slightly more difficult. But no offense, but that sounds like it makes it, sl it is a easier. little bit easier. It is easier. Yeah, it's easier with the exception of your friends are going to take your fucking good resources out of the bank that you need because they're bastard <laughs> men. Um, but other than that, yes. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm glad you're having fun with that. Anything else on the games that you have been playing this week? Uh, that's it. The League of Legends is a game that no one cares about, but everyone plays it. That's right. Speaking of everyone plays it, folks, we need to talk about Minecraft and how my nephew got me addicted to it again. Um, I mm, talked they about do that. I talked about it last week or two weeks ago but basically my nephew he loves minecraft look everybody loves minecraft fantastic game um and he really wanted to play it with me so we've been playing it a little bit and then he was like hey we should play multiplayer we should have a server we should have a server i was like okay 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 and then finally i made a server and folks look uh the fam the famous sub pixel server that lasted two weeks Never yeah forget. no it lasted it lasted a month or two it was it was let me put it this way more successful than i ever thought it could be uh oh. but um look i started a creative server i actually use this really cool service i want to shout it out called eternos a-t-e-r-n-o-s basically it is free minecraft servers and they actually mm. give you a lot of options and the whole way it runs is there's ads on the server control page and if 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 it goes more than five minutes of the server being up and nobody on it then it shuts the server down so you have to go to the web page to turn the server on and you can give other people access to turn the server on. That's pretty smart. But they run ads on that page. So that, that's and, and that's just enough for them to run the servers and to offer some some a little bit of hardware so you can run some mods on it. But anyways, we've been running a creative server. And look, long story short, I'm basically running a Minecraft server for a bunch of like eight to 12 year olds including my nephew and his friends from the neighborhood. And your, your Roblox is going to catch up with you, man. You got to be I careful. Know. I know. We built a whole town. I may have built a church with the burning cross on top of it. Well, it, look, in my defense, I didn't build the burning cross. Somebody else wanted to. And so they did. And also I was building a castle, but then they said it looks like a church. And quite frankly, they were right. It did look a lot more like a church. So I turned it into a church. But we have like this little town and it's creative mode. I love creative mode because it's just like build whatever you want. So we have mm -hmm. a little swimming pool. We got a castle. Uh, yesterday, my nephew was like, we could only play for like 15 minutes. And he was like, hey, let's have a building competition. So we built some stuff in the town and then we like showed it off to each other. We only had 15 minutes to build it off this theme that he picked. Uh, well, it, I don't think we had a winner, but it was me. Uh, clearly nice, good job i say yeah you better you better uh, beat those kids i will say um my nephew's pretty good though he's been playing for a while so he he does make some aesthetic like architectural decisions that i'm like oh wow i never would have thought of that that's cool art nouveau i know minecraft man minecraft is great it's it's just like if i had any sort of uh guts or motivation or balls i i would be an architect among many other professions but i'm not so minecraft is my architectural output does that make any sense? You, you ever feel like that playing Minecraft? Uh, I actually, when I was a kid, you know, like when you're a kid, 
It's like, I want to be a firefighter. I want to be a spaceman. Yeah. According to my mother, the first time anyone asked me that, I said I want to be an architect, which if is like the furthest thing from any job I would ever actually have. But oh. I find that so fucking funny that like six year old me was like, I'm gonna be an architect. Architect. Yeah. So like, I like, don't even know what the fuck that word meant. Probably not. No. So it's just like, it's just so much fun playing with these kids. And it's not like I'm showing them Minecraft either, because even though they're little, they've been playing for four or five years, you know, like, yeah, yeah. like my niece is, she's three or four. I think she's four. I can't remember. Um, and she she's just now getting into Minecraft. So even though they're young, they've still been playing Minecraft for a while. And they're like, oh, check out this technique. Like, like uh, my nephew showed me how to make a table. And it's like you put a post, a fence post, and then you put a piece of carpet. And it looks like a table because the carpet is thin and it covers the whole square. So all this crazy stuff that it's, it's just a lot of fun. Um, the other game I've been playing, Chris, have you heard of this little game, this little indie game? It's out on Game Pass called Art of Rally. No, I'm going to guess this is a racing thing and not a racism thing. It's both. Oh, uh, no. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Wait. No, no, we don't have time for a game design exercise. Anyways. Um, <laughs> hey, Will's not here. We can do what we want. <laughs> I just wanted to bring it up because Art of Rally, um, it was on Game Pass, and I do like racing games. Um, rally driving is... Chris, tell me what you know about rally driving. It is a type of, uh, I was a drive racing. Uh, it is a type of like racing, the driving type, um, where so a person drives for a length of the race and they get to a certain point and then the next driver is it. I don't know if it's like they swap, they take the car or they just keep going. No, no. It's is that not what that is? No, it's it's basically like if you picture. OK, well, you're you're from you're from the rural south in a way. At least That's I don't true. I don't think you're from the urban south. Um, I'm, I'm from the most urban part of my shitty state of South Carolina. OK, but you still know rural back roads. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So just picture it. it basically rally started in in um, Norwegian countries um, because. uh there's a there's a tall tale i don't know if it's true or not they talk about it in art of rally i don't know if it's true but basically that this guy in the 70s was going to be late to the sauna that he was meeting his friends there and so he had to drive as fast as possible down these like dirt snowy back roads of you can't of miss that Norway. sauna <laughs> yeah and so the whole idea is that you're on these you're on these back roads they're typically not paved it's point to point racing so they basically pick like here's a back road that goes 12 miles and it's typically single lane there's no markings or anything, and it's just go as fast as you can. So it ends up being a lot of, like, threading the needle racing, and there's a lot of, like, dirt and gravel, and you're doing a lot of sliding and stuff. Um, and it ends up being very technical. I'm terrible at it because it's, like, it's a lot of, like, um, it's kind of like a boat where you have to think about when you want to turn in a boat, you can't turn on a dime. You have to, like, start the maneuver early. And it's a lot like that in rally racing where it's, like, you don't turn at the corner. You start to turn before the corner so your car can slide out, lose a bit of, little bit of speed, and then be oriented for the turn. So anyways, um, Art of Rally is basically kind of like a top-down rally racer. But what I really like about it is that rally racing used to be huge in the 70s and 80s. And it's kind of this weird... I'm thinking about how to put it. So this is not a race game where they're just like, hey, here's some tracks and some cars. Have fun. Like the campaign is you reliving rally racing in the 60s and 70s and 80s. So like the first. Oh, it's a campaign mode. There's a campaign mode, but it's not. It's oh, not I would have guessed it to be online. No, no. At least I think there's a little bit of online, but there is a campaign mode. But it's it's not super strict or realistic, but it's just like, hey. 1968 and it's like these are the rally cars you have rally has just started there's one race this year and you run the race and then the next year it's like rally's a little bit more popular somebody introduced a new bmw car now you have two cars to choose from and now there's two races so it's this is this by the uh totally accurate battle simulator team i don't think so but it I looks like their like whole aesthetic their style yeah which i'm very into by the way it's just this weird, like, like you know how Ghost of Tsushima is like this, this, this love letter to like, like the Japanese aesthetic, this, the samurai way of the, the warrior. Takara style of films, yeah. Exactly. This is this weird thing where it's like this love letter to rally, 
but it's not like, yeah, we're going to rally race. We're going to go fast. It's more just like, ah, uh, another peaceful rally race through the countryside. And it's just like, it feels really good as a racer, but it, the way that it's presented it, like I never would have imagined that a racing game would present itself as like, we are going to like aesthetically memorialize this era of motorsports history in such like a nice love letter way. Um, I would never like I don't like racing games and all, but this looks like actually very fun. The more I'm looking at uh, screenshots and videos it is fun. of this. Yeah. The only reason also, why I... also, yeah, it has a vague like uh, Swedish Swiss uh, yeah. thing going on there. Yeah. The only reason why I'm not playing it anymore is I'm terrible at rally games. Um, <laughs> like I'm, I'm I'm pretty good at normal racing games, but rally games, I just can't. It's it's like a slightly different type of racing um, but I, I just, I just wanted to bring it up to give it a shout out. If any of that is tweaking your interest, Chris or listener, give it a shot. It's free on game pass. It's, it's just a very unique way. I feel like all the racing games nowadays are either like, we're super hardcore realistic, like project cars or iRacing, racing, or they're like, yeah, fun racer, you know, like hot wheels or like Forza. And this is like a completely different take on a racing game that I've never thought about before. And it's, it's I'm cool. I'm very much over like super realistic racing games like I, it's fine. Yeah, I'm glad that the fours of people get their forces, but like, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. This is just weird. It's it's like a peaceful racing game. It's anyways. The other game I've been playing. It's the Battlefield 2042 beta. Uh, it started up, I believe, yesterday or the day before. Have you had a chance to hop into this, Chris? Are you at all interested I in this? I have not. Uh, I'm I, I'm not typically a Battlefield person. I did download it, so I might end up actually playing it. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. It, convince me. I don't know that I can. Ooh. So quick backstory. I loved I was a very early Battlefield fan. I remember mm -hmm. buying Battlefield 1942 when it came out. And it couldn't run on our computers. And then I convinced my dad to buy a whole new graphics card just to run the game. Nice. Power um, move. Loved 1942. Loved Vietnam. Loved 2. Bad Company. I don't think I played Bad Company because it was console only. Bad Company 2 I liked. Um, Battlefield 2142. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then yep, I kind of just started to fall off from there. I still like Battlefield 3. But then four kind of fell off. And basically all the recent battlefields, I have at least tried all of them, but they they feel a little bit too much like. I don't know, it's it's like that thing in Call of Duty where it's like you're playing a team game, but the enemy just spawns all around you. You know, there's no real sense of like a battlefield. It's like it's just a constant crazy insanity going on. And they did things like, oh, well, now you can spawn on your squad with like no penalty whatsoever. So it's like it doesn't matter how far you go. It doesn't matter how hmm. how much you're pushing the battlefield, the, the, the line between your side and their side forward. It doesn't really exist because they can spawn in anywhere or parachute anywhere. So Battlefield 2042 was doing some things like... um one of the cool things they did is there's no more classes. So you're not picking like I am assault and assault means I can only use assault rifles and I get an ammo bag. Or, you know, if I want to use a sniper rifle, then I have to pick the sniper class. They're not okay. doing that in this one. You can pick any weapon you want and then you're picking an operator, which basically gets you like two gadgets or skills. Um, oh, OK. So they, they it's like. Kind of like a little bit of that Rainbow Six uh, Siege DNA. Exactly. Yeah, it's 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 like a hero shooter, but you get to pick your loadout. Um, and it, it okay. I, I like that. I like that. Yeah, I I love it because it's like they kept. Switching. Or I guess it's even like uh, it's like it's like Titan Valor Apex Legends. Exactly. Yeah, they they kept switching it around between games where it'd be like I I I tend to like using a light machine gun, you know, like a saw or an M two forty nine that type of mm -hmm. thing, and and they were always like. In some games, they were like, oh, if you want to use a light machine gun, you have to pick the medic class. And then it's like, well, now I'm the medic. So either I'm not healing people and I'm a bad medic or I'm the medic. So I should really be healing people and reviving them. But really, I, the only reason I picked this is for the light machine gun. And they've, they've disassociated those two. And it's fantastic. I love it. Um, something else they've done. This is not crazy new, but it's crazy new for the Battlefield series. I got to take a breath for this. This is not a surprise. <laughs> they showed this off, but folks, it's incredible. You can change the attachments on your weapon in game. So like without having to respawn without having to respawn, I'll give you an example. I was 
um, running down a hill towards a bunker complex. The bunker complex was like 150 meters away. So um, I had a long range scope on my rifle and I got close to the bunker complex and I found a tunnel entrance and I was like, oh, and I hit T and I immediately switched to a close quarter scope. And then I went down Ooh. in there. So it's like your barrel attachment, your magazine type, which I believe is also like your round type, like armor piercing. Mm -hmm. It also does, does benefits like extended magazine, your scope and your, uh, your foregrip, which is like bipod or flashlight or laser pointer. It's the same type of normal attachments they've done. But if you have it unlocked, you, you can change it in game literally on the fly. It takes you like a second. And it's, it's incredible. It's such an incredible ingenious change because Battlefield is all about like huge distances, but then also close quarters combat. So being able to rapidly yeah, yeah. switch between the two, it's really, really good. And you can um, have it on one gun instead of having to like designate like this is my long range, this is my short range. So exactly. Like your, AR, your AR can be, you know, multiple different combat distances. Yeah. And, and I think it does a fantastic job at in discouraging camping because I feel like the old system accidentally encouraged camping. Like if I spawned in as a sniper or as or if I had a uh, if I had like an AR, uh, an AR 10 with a with a long scope on it, I'm like, OK, I'm not getting close to people. That would be very right. stupid for me to get close to people this. But now I'm like, oh, I need to get closer. Boom. Switch my scope. OK, now I can get closer. Um, and it feels great. A and I think. The little changes like that make me hopeful for this game. That being said, this beta has got some issues, people. Um, <laughs> it's uh -oh, folks, there's a lot of glitches and bugs on it, <clears throat> which it is a beta. But at the same time, this game is supposed to come out in like five weeks. Um, and I believe they admitted that this build of the beta is from July, which is not that old. Oh, no. So it has a lot of glitches. It has a lot of performance issues. They also um, they don't really do a good job of distinguishing between teams. So it's supposed to be Russians versus the US. But then there's this whole concept of classic of expats, which are basically like refugees due to a climate crisis that are basically establishing their own like non-national entity. So the operators like if 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 somebody on the Russian team chooses an operator and I choose the same operator on the U.S. side, we look identical. And it's just like they didn't just give one of you like an evil mustache. No. And so so like I I've had it happen to me, but I, I like there was a fantastic uh, person who's, who said on Twitter, they were just like, I was playing as a Marcus. I turned the corner and I saw an enemy Marcus. Such a Marcus. Confusedly shooting his own teammate who was also a Marcus. So then I killed both of them. <laughs> and it's just like, like, you can't really tell who is your enemy. They have oh, like. Oh, yeah, that actually is a bad system. OK. Yeah, like they have the, the dots. They, they don't have like a name tag over their head. They they do. But it's when you're looking at them and if they've been spotted, they have a dot over their head. But otherwise, it is just like a person in the distance. Um, it's mm. not it's not like a super hardcore mode. So they, they quickly pop that info. But at the same time, it's like a lot of you can't just quickly. I'm thinking about like Red Orchestra 2 did a really good job of it, where not just the uniform, but also the way that people would run like one faction would run one hand on their weapon and the other one would run like this two hands on their weapon so you could you got used to at a glance being able to look at somebody running. Design. exactly yeah this is not doing that period at all so it's just a lot of people that look identical running around um the the controls for the vehicles are wonky um it has that's some, unfortunate because that's like obviously like a big selling point for battlefield and it has some cool vehicles the the flow of the map some of the parts of the map flow well other parts of the map just feel like a big jumble. How many mess. maps are in the uh, beta? Just one. Just one. Oof, it's a pretty. Like... It's a pretty. Hey, nice... It's a beta, so whatever. Yeah, it's a pretty nice map, but basically the northern part of the map feels pretty good. It's this whole rocket complex thing. The southern part of the map is just like this weird jungle area, and there's like two points that nobody ever captures because it just feels awful to fight there. <laughs> um, and I, I. I can't really comment too much on the movement or the shooting because I'm not great at these games. So part of it is I don't know what's me being bad versus the game being badly designed. But there is a lot of comments online about people saying how the movement feels awful. It's too quick. Like there is a slide crouch now and people like turning around quickly and no scoping people, which typically you couldn't do in Battlefield. It was more of a Call of Duty thing. That's my, yeah, much more of a COD thing. Yeah, yeah so it's... I am enjoying it, but I think part of my enjoyment is just that I am I really like the changes that they have made and I'm coming back to Battlefield after a long time away. I think I think each person's going to have to I highly recommend playing the open beta. 
it's on for the next couple days, I believe on all consoles, well, except for Switch and on PC, because I think it's going to be an individual decision for each person, which is a little bit of a shame, but who knows? We'll see how it goes. I'm just, I, I feel like at this point, I'm just like, I'm not going to pay 60 bucks for a shooter. No, but it's not going not gonna, to gonna happen. Folks, I found a legal loophole. Oh, I found something called. Um, so do you know about EA Play? Yeah, it's just their fucking uh, Games Pass, right? It's their, yeah, it's their subscription service. So if you pay $15 a month for EA Play Pro, which I believe is PC only, you get the Battlefield 2042 Ultimate version. You get access to it. So for me, I'm not going to spend 60 bucks for Battlefield 2042 base version day one. I'm just going to pay 15 bucks for that first month, get the Ultimate version, play it, and if I'm still playing it, maybe I'll pay another 15 the next month. Ian, that's not a that's not a loophole. That's just doing what they that's just like doing one of the marketing schemes they know, want you to do. It, I feel like I'm cheating them. It's like uh, the, the ultimate version is one hundred and ten dollars. Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, <gasps> what the fuck? I know I'm paying fifteen dollars to play the game for a month, which is all I would probably play it anyways. That is so much money. It's it's yeah, it's just like it. I, and the other thing is, like, I, I don't know about this yet, but typically with EA Play, which is the, like, $5 a month version, which is consoles and PC, you typically get, like, a 10-hour free trial of new games where you can basically play it for 10 hours. Mm -hmm. So if that is available for Battlefield 2042, I don't recommend anybody buy this game flat out. I think, I think you should do EA Play or EA Play Pro and, and give it a trial or play it for the month before you start putting money into it. Cause Make them earn your money. Exactly. Yeah, this beta is a little rough. Uh, there's a lot of promising stuff in it, but they have a lot to fix. And I think the big concern ultimately is this is too much for them to fix between a beta and a release. Um, so who knows? We'll see. Battlefield 2042. I'm excited for it. Chris is getting it. Will's getting it. No. Nope. Will's brother's probably getting it. We're going to have a big squad going. I know David's getting it. I, I would like David to roll together a squad. I think it would be fun to roll with squad. How many, uh, how many nerds in a squad? I think it's four in a squad, four or six, and then it's 128 players, which... It's actually, no mag, but it'll do. It actually feels pretty good. I've had some moments where nice. the map flow works, so like you'll literally be running across a runway, assaulting a point, and you look to your left and your right, and there's literally like 20 or 30 of your teammates running That's with cool. you. Yeah. And you've got like 10 helicopters in the air bombarding, and it's... There are moments it's got where, like a early uh, planetscape energy exactly yeah it's it's got some it's There's got some planet side was that game called planet side yeah planet side yeah that player count when it works man it's working it feels pretty good anyways let's um let's get the news in here but first we got to get zach on the scene the uh news theme zach come on in We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? Oh, thank you, Zach. Uh, Blessed Saint recently announced Nobel it's, it's Prize It's so nice winner. of him to just like come come in here, no matter what he's doing. Yes, you know, I know, I know he's got his kids over today. Yes, uh, he's been acquitted several times. Not guilty. That's what acquitted means, folks. Thank you, Zach. Um, Chris, it's almost like I didn't do it. Basically. Almost. Uh, Chris, what the fuck's going on with Twitch? Uh, well, he, see, here's a little thing. But you might not know, Ian. Not everyone knows this. Is that behind all these websites is a bunch of strings of words and letters that make the website go hmm. and make them do stuff. It's called code. Oh. I know, you learn something every day, right? Um, and some, some, some rascals, some little scamps, got into the Twitch code and said... I'll just uh, I'll just have this for myself, won't I? And uh, I'll just tear it up and do whatever I want. And they found a bunch of stuff, including, yeah, the source code for Twitch, which, uh, boy, that's not a good thing to have out there. Amazon, you fucking idiots. Um, <laughs> yeah, I want to I mean, I mean, read real quick. This is a list from Video Games Chronicle. The leaked Twitch data reportedly includes the entirety of Twitch's source code with commit history. 
creator payout reports from 2019, mobile desktop and console, Twitch clients, proprietary SDKs, which is uh, software development kits, and internal AWS services used by Twitch. Every other property that Twitch owns, including IGDB and CurseForge, an unreleased Steam competitor codenamed Vapor from Amazon Game Studios, and Twitch internal red teaming tools, parentheses, designed to improve security by having staff pretend to be hackers, and parentheses. This is... This is pretty big. 125 gigabytes of very important information. Um, I will say damning information, some would say. Yeah, I will say um, I saw some uh, security security industry quotes on different articles saying that it looked like whoever released this did clean up the data a little bit in that they went through. They made sure that the uh, user data was encrypted. So there are encrypted user passwords, but also that they scrubbed out any um, addresses or any credit card information. Um, in there that they made sure that the release was relatively harmless to individual Twitch users. But that being said, that those encrypted passwords could be cracked one day. So change your password. That also just uh, makes everyone think, oh, wonder if uh, this is an internal uh, Twitch maneuver here. Huh? What are the chances? Yeah. Also, I wonder if this is a bit of a. I forget what the term is, but basically hackers who do good by uh, punishing bad companies with all the negative publicity Twitch has been getting lately. Mm. Um, this has been pretty crazy. I, uh, you know, there's some there's some interesting stuff in here. Um, any thoughts on the revenue list, which is basically a per month payout? Uh, you know, uh, man, critical role makes a lot of money. <laughs> they do make a lot of money. And I, I OK. Critical Role, number one from, well, first of all, first of all, before we talk about this, I know our stance, I know my stance, which uh, I'm going to say it here is de facto subpixel stance. I, I saw some websites and some community discords basically saying we are not going to discuss the numbers of the payouts to individual creators and we will ban you if you talk about them. Well, what's uh, what's your stance on that? What do you think about that? Fuck that shit. I know. That feels like that feels like when your employer I'll, tells you. I'll talk. Yeah, the ex exactly. I was gonna say that, yeah. that that's some fucking like, oh, oh, you're not supposed to talk about how much you make to your coworkers. That's impolite. No, it's not. It's you trying to prevent collective bargaining exactly. because that's how fucking unions get formed. Fuck this shit. I want to know exactly how much people make exactly. so I can dunk on them appropriately. Critical Role doesn't deserve $10 million. There, I said it. I, I agree with you. I've tried to listen to Critical Role. It's not good. It's not that good. It's well, actually, Matt Mercer is great. The players are awful. There, I said it. It's I said it. I don't, yeah, I, don't, I don't give a shit about Critical Role. I just, I just find it funny that um, people, apparently people are upset that Critical Role got paid $10 million between August 2019 and October 2021 just from the Twitch payout revenue, which is basically from Yeah, ads. I have bad news for you guys. That's less than a third of what they actually probably made. So Exactly, yeah. Because my understanding is this only includes the Twitch payout, which is basically subscriptions, gifts and ad revenue through twitch itself this doesn't include this is all this is is uh ad revenue subscriptions and bits which yeah. are like the internal the twitch thing this does not count flat out regular ass donations exactly. i do not know if critical role accepts regular ass donations i assume they do because they're a streaming platform and fucking everyone does 100 um but uh yeah so uh, and the vast vast majority of money gained by twitch streamers is donations i saw i i i just want to dive down the discourse hole real quick because i saw some people apparently being like oh critical role gets way too much money not because of the quality of critical role but just being like all they do is stream D D, and then other people being like do you realize that they have like 30 people on their production staff to make critical role in which case my response is how do you need 30 people to make a D, D stream? Like, yeah, you need a couple people behind the camera and a producer, but do you really need that many people? You're diluting that $10 million I mean, too much, I, buddy. I highly doubt that they have that many people on every single shoot. That seems ridiculous. I mean, yeah. they have to pay like they have to pay the voice cast, which is a substantial voice cast and stuff like that. I mean, like, here's the thing. Do I do I personally think that Critical Role is a $10 million property? Fuck no. Do I think it's like a $30 million property, which it probably is how much it's it made in that time period? Also, fuck no. But they <laughs> they did it, so did fuck it. off. Yeah, good like, for them. I don't yeah. like the program, but it doesn't mean that like, it doesn't mean that like, oh, we should stop supporting them because they made X amount of money. No, it's fucking ridiculous. They earned that dosh. Yeah, also, I, I'm 100% on board with these numbers being public 
why not that these numbers are public but these numbers being made public against twitch's wishes because of you course. know there was a lot of things around like ninja getting huge payouts moving to mixer exclusivity yeah, and yeah, i can't yeah. remember the number but i bet if you go back it's probably marginally more than he would have made staying with twitch with this payout because this is 10 million dollars in one year i'm looking down the number 10 lyric made 2.9 million in a single year a lot of these are solo streamers making a lot of money so people being like oh that mixer payout is crazy for the exclusivity deal and i'm looking at it going no there's plenty of money on twitch too this is i'm glad these numbers are in there. no it's, it's there. just that he got a guaranteed contract like where he could go somewhere else and still get the same uh, yeah. donations from people it doesn't affect anything yeah this is i oh uh, mixer i also saw some people talking about how like it's i think it's the top 100 that is in this list and how that only represents like 0.01 percent of all twitch partners uh so the full hacked list is uh the top ten thousand. so it's substantial i just i don't know look i'm a little bit biased here so pixel we make fantastic content but this is i feel like let me know where you guys sit this. You know, you guys are at Save Daddy. You guys are doing better than us. But, you know, no offense, but you're you're still not cream of the crop. And I feel like this is just... No, we're, we're not. We didn't make the top 10,000, baby. <laughs> this this hurts me. And let me tell you why it hurts me. Because, and I'm going to get a little bit of a, an ivory tower. I'm going to get a little bit snooty here. But I've seen some of these streamers. They don't put a lot of effort into their streams. But because they end up being favored by the Twitch algorithm and they get favored and they get on the front page and all this stuff, they get featured by Twitch so much and it's so much easier for them to get viewers. And then they get this much money out of it. And I feel like the whole system is just horribly flawed because there are people like you and I and Subpixel and Save Data that are putting in a huge amount of effort and making incredible content, a lot better than stuff on this list. And we're getting like 0.000001% of these viewers. It's crazy. Yes. Yeah, that, but that's how. But that's that's how that is by design, Ian. Like that is not a that is it's not a, a like something falling through the cracks. That I is exactly it. what what they want to happen and how they want it to happen is so that like like because if you have if if so this is something that like uh we talk about a lot at work because I like work in a social media department of a very large company, um and uh, like the fact that like the algorithm is designed to only feed itself. Yeah. And to like feed feed the fattest pigs alongside the king so that like it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Is that like you when you have a large number of views on smaller smaller individuals, your your Ludwigs, your your criticals, for example, if something goes terribly wrong with one of them, that's a lot easier to manage than something going terribly wrong with a hundred people if you if you spread the algorithm out. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. It it just reminds me of it's it's like whoever said don't keep all your eggs in one basket never met a pr team yeah yeah it's like um i was on youtube the other day i i barely ever use the youtube mobile app but um they highlight a lot of shorts Adequate. now like the youtube shorts content and i i think yeah. save, save data sampled in this we sampled in this a couple months ago where youtube we, was pressing we all did when the when the algorithm was broken <laughs> yeah when the algorithm was broken and basically they were favoring a lot of shorts so you could make a single short video <laughs> And they were showing it to like tens of thousands of people. It was crazy, um, which is huge numbers for for us. And so we were making shorts. And back then, the shorts it was like a new game, but it was it was exciting. There were people doing crazy things with it. I went on shorts the other day just because I scrolled past it, and I saw like ten videos. Do you know what those ten shorts videos all had in common on YouTube Shorts? Uh, they were by the same like three people. No, they all had tits. Ah, you know, I was, I was gonna, one. I was gonna say boobs, and it was just like it, it's, it's, it's like I'm not a kid's account, but at the same time, I'm not an explicitly like mature account on YouTube. I my account is basically just like gardening, quilting, machining, and like car videos, pretty much, and sub pixel. That's pretty much it. And they're just throwing tits in my face, and it's just you like saved it in there. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> what? No, I, I don't even want. <laughs> are you? A, are you? Are you? Are you a? Uh, are you a regular regular car reviews guy? No, I used to be. He's a little bit too I snarky I, for me. I also used to be. <laughs> yeah, it's just like it's just like the algorithm, like you said, it feeds itself, and they just have zero regard for like the quality of the content they are putting out. And my like my one pitch from the bottom, my pitch for both of us is basically like. We're putting out better content than these people. You know, you put up Ace Attorney with a with a real attorney. 
or you put up mini game game show and you put it on the front page for one day and you're gonna have fantastic content with a lot of people watching it versus some idiot that a lot of people are watching just because they're on the front page yes I'm feeling sexy but you youtube appreciate youtube likes the story of like a, a content creator who spends 10 years to finally break that 100k because then they're deemed like it's also a thing of like it's weird. It's YouTube's own weird vetting process where they're like, yeah. it, we're testing your commitment to the shitty platform. That's true. That's a very good point. You know, they can't just make you popular one day. They expect you to. Oh, to no, 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 no. They can. I, I yeah, yeah. Like, but I, I just I, mean, I, I had a conversation with yeah. uh, one of the heads of TikTok the other day. He was on, on like a meeting uh, with my company and like the ability of them to flip a switch and make someone famous is incredibly real. Let yeah. me tell you. Yeah, just look at what's what's that uh, what's that stupid singer's name that's had like four plagiarism suits against her and has been in the Biden White House. Olivia Rodrigo, is that what it is? Oh, I uh, that is her name. I cannot comment on any clients of my company, so I can't say anything about her. <laughs> so I will say, look, as somebody who's barely following it, she basically got TikTok famous, came out of nowhere, then like four... no, 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 she was she's she's a Disney joint. Oh God, that's even worse. She, she she's a Disney. Ugh. Wait, which is why, like, when, when people want to be like, what is she from from Disney? I don't know. High school musical, the musical, the series. Oh, which is the she's Disney plus original she's joint. New, she's new the Disney. main character of that. She's new Disney. I hate this conversation. Can we move on now? Yeah, sure. You brought it up. <laughs> Sony is adding game trials to PS5. Let's run down what this is. It's apparently PS5 only, UK only, mm -hmm. and just for two games, Death Stranding Director's Cut and Sackboy. Oh, shit. Big adventure. Is it UK only? I didn't even know that. According to this uh, Eurogamer this test, article. Though. This is like the first like shot here. Um, I believe it offers five hours. Oh, sorry. Six hours for Death Stranding, five hours of Sackboy that you get to basically download the game, play it, and then it cuts you off and says you should buy the game now. This is, I like this idea. It's a great idea. Ian, does it happen to mention when that, when that five or six hours starts? Yeah, I believe it is when you download the game when you start the download it begins from the moment you hit download trial via console or add to library via web sony you idiots there it is there it is folks this is like a really nintendo move which is like great idea horrible implementation yes <sighs> I, I i joked earlier on uh, uh around the monitor that i was like it's because Japan has no idea what the fuck the internet is in the year of 2021. Um, although, as they pointed out, internet. <laughs> Sony is based in the US now, their headquarters, so that's not a good excuse anymore. That's right, but a lot of their strategy is coming out of Europe, isn't it? I'm trying to yeah, I honestly, honestly, Sony is such a fucking big company. They're, yeah. they're, one of their headquarters is in the same office building as mine, and like I have no fucking scope of like what the fuck goes on. Yeah. Like that, it, they're just massive. They're just too big of a company to comprehend. Um, it's because their hands are everything: televisions, cameras, fucking uh, digital media, That's true. consoles. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, it's. I, and we talked about this earlier. Uh, it, this feels like almost certainly that it's going to be fixed. That the that someone will make the phone call or someone mm -hmm. will tell someone else. Okay, cool. Just make it when they start playing the game because uh, they're already tracking your playtime. It's a fucking video game. Yeah, they're tracking all that shit and sending it off to be to be farmed for data so they know how long you spend looking at the sky and shit like that. Um, yeah, it, it's it's just but it's just so fucking stupid that someone at Sony walked into another office, said, I have this idea. And then someone went, that's a great idea. And they said, oh, by the way, the timer should start when they press download, not when they start the game. And somebody else was like, I agree. Dear wow. Lord. I know. It's just it's bonkers. Um. I think it's a great idea. I'm curious to see if Microsoft, I don't want to say steals it, but Microsoft is so agile now that I would love for Microsoft to take this idea. Yeah, I, I will like this whole console cycle, I think, has been when and it's, it's very early to say, but it's being defined by like Microsoft is really trying. Yeah. And Sony is just being Sony. Yeah, I oh, well, now I think about it, I don't think Microsoft needs to do this because all their first party games are on Game Pass. So why offer a trial when it's just yeah. like, hey, pay us 10 bucks for, for and the money. Sony is not going to do Game Pass. No fucking no. way. They, they, they're, they're doing the bare minimum now with PS Now downloadable games and their yes. PlayStation collection. 
It'll like be like, look, we have that too, but they really don't. That's the only know? way to play the play the Sly Cooper games, by the way, in case you want to play the Sly Cooper games. PlayStation Now. Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, what a great system. Speaking of Xbox, though, let's talk about this rumor from Games Radar that Xbox is reportedly trialing Tomb Raider, Just Cause, and Hitman Studios ahead of potential acquisitions. This is coming from grub snacks podcast uh this is games beats jeff grub who has kind of mm-hmm. risen in fame lately for a lot of a uh rumor talk um he went from went from being funny and having news to being funny and having a lot of fucking news a lot of news yeah so um crystal dynamics io interactive and avalanche studios are in the discussion so square enix uh, i'm sorry crystal dynamics is rise of the tomb raider perfect dark that mm-hmm. kind of makes sense because they already yeah, have I see it. a bit of a partnership with with the initiative on helping out with Perfect Dark. IO Interactive, I'm not sure how I feel about this one because they just went independent from Square Enix, I believe, um, yeah. and kept Hitman. And I will say that, that that does seem that is very something that a like that is a very good corporate move on yeah. IO's behalf to break away from one corporate overlord, make yourself a lot more valuable and then be bought by another corporate overlord is a like like uh, the marketing person if that was if th- if this was their intention uh is has justified their salary. Um I actually think that one is very unlikely unless Microsoft pays a fuckload of money. Yeah, which they've got. But like unless there's a lot of zeros on that number. Yeah. Then you also have um Avalanche Just Cause 3 and Contraband, the newly announced Contraband. Um, you know, it's interesting as, as I'm, I'm reading through this article for the first time, because of course I prepare for podcast. Um, Grub points out, quote, Grub points out the fact that he believes Xbox is happy with its upcoming slate and is therefore looking to try out game studios. And so this is not necessarily saying that this, this is, this is a non-story. I'm sorry. Let me just read this quote here. Well, maybe that's when Xbox will go and say, okay, let's bring Crystal Dynamics into work on this game with initiative. Grub explains, let's get to know them, see how it works, see how they play out. And if they meet our standards, then we'll say, hey, Square Enix, are you interested in selling Crystal Dynamics? I think that's very likely what's happening. So this is not Grub saying that is what's happening. He's saying, I think Microsoft may be working with this studio uh, and at the same time thinking about buying them in the future. There's no story here. This is complete. Judge, ju- judging by how Grub talks on Twitter, I'm guessing that is a case of legally speaking, I think this because I can't necessarily say that I have on good authority this. I don't know because he's a journalist. He could do that. He could say that. You know, he could say, I have somebody on background saying this, but he's saying, here, I'll read this in this another quote and just count how many times he says think. Quote, I think that's what's happening with Avalanche, the studio that is making contraband. I think they're on a tryout. Xbox are working with IO Interactive. I think IO Interactive might be on tryout. I think that's where they're at right now, where they're happy with it. So I think this is him just saying, I know the industry. I think this is what's going on. Yeah. I mean, there could definitely be a thing of like with Xbox's internal projections for what they're seeing from this console cycle leads them to be a little more bullish on acquiring more stuff. Yeah. And which I mean, which would make sense to be like to be in the realm of I think, I think, I think, because it is hard to know that like, oh, we're going to hit these sales numbers on all these games. So Halo Infinite's going to do as good as we think it is, um, which like I mean, Microsoft, I think more than Sony is good about measuring that they have a much more Western centric like uh, marketing and accountability thing of like how games will sell. Whereas Sony just kind of accounts. So Nintendo is the worst for this just accounts that their fucking games will sell really well. And yeah, yeah they're right more often than not, but also fuck off. <laughs> um, I, I, I think that it makes sense though, for a lot of those companies, if that's that, those things seem to be in, microsoft's wheelhouse of things to acquire honestly i i think avalanche is going to end up being one of the most valuable studios to acquire in the next five ten years not because just cause i think just cause is a useless valueless franchise um but that that company knows how to make games with good engines and they and they they have their hands in so many different other studios games yes Um, yes exactly yeah so i think they're they're well connected in the industry and they're well respected even though they just make just cause yeah so i think looking into the story there's this is less of a rumor and more of a future projection from a noted analyst but at the same time i can this logic checks out you know this would make sense 
Um, let's move on to another story. China to ban video games featuring same-sex relationships, effeminate men, and moral choices. So let's talk about video games in China. They were illegal. Video game consoles were illegal in China for a while, then they became legal a couple of years ago, but now they are cracking down on them again. Um, this is a memo courtesy of the South China Morning Post from the State Backed Gaming Association, which says that uh, games must not be viewed as pure entertainment and should instead convey a correct set of values. Games that feature queer relationships or effeminate males, the memo states, should not be approved for release in China. This is pretty worrisome, right? This is, uh... Um. Uh, yes and no. Um. So the whole like media should um media should like put our youth on the the straight and narrow and like the uh, the good path morally and all that shit. Uh, that that's been like a China thing since um the guy after Mao Zedong is Hua. Ooh, Hua Gufong. I might be fucking that up. <laughs> somebody's gonna uh, some uh, someone's gonna correct me on the internet anyway fucking no, whoever no, no, no. fuck we don't have any viewers you can say whoever you oh. are <laughs> yeah fuck it it's the it's the guy who uh seated mouse dog who gives a shit um he's dead uh he can't stop me <laughs> uh that was like a big initiative like we we need we need our, our 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 men to be men need to be taught that by the media they watch and women don't need media because we hate women because we're china up until like 2014 and yeah. then only in in name do they not hate women um fucking uh, this is a political dog whistle I, I think there is i think fucking nothing is going to come out of this except maybe uh more censorship of ports to games in china namely removing of lgbtq plus like mentions they won't yeah. change anything about the characters because that requires like a lot more work they'll just change the voice line and yeah. move on with their fucking day um i, I should... this is nothing also like look at fucking games coming out of china like genshin impact where it's like fucking half the goddamn characters are effeminate looking men like uh, fucking look at yourself before you comment and where, that's, where you that's shit. anime that's anime uh <laughs> it still counts um i think i think my concern with this is not so much i i i think you're right there is not like a strong censorship presence in video games from china right now anyways simply because there are not a lot of video games coming out of china and china is not a huge video game market yet in the global world but yes. when you look at things like movies when you look at things like the whole nba china crisis like china is such a huge economy that you have these international companies who are making international properties that are starting to bow to chinese national interest and requirements and demands when making their properties just so that they can release it in china and the united states and but that, here's the thing that 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 will only proceed so long as the profit is there. Yeah, and 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 kind of like, kind of in a weird catch twenty two type of way, they have locked down the video game market so much in China that the money's not there yet. Yes, exactly that. Yeah, yeah. Whereas with movies, you know, like the Transformers movies that keep taking place in China, or uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron that had like a major Chinese actress in it and took place partly in China because that was how they qualified to get Chinese funding. They had certain requirements mm -hmm. they had to hit in the movie. That's not happening in the video games yet because there's not enough of video game market in China. But my concern yeah. is that if we do get there, we're going to start to see some games essentially kowtowing to Chinese national policy, and that's that's going to be concerning. Yeah, uh, my my thing is that there is enough of a thing in China of people downloading VPNs to play games that aren't allowed in China as there is. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I, like the thing is, uh, with any any production, anything anything like this, where you have to change shit to localize it, it's a it's a cost savings thing. Well, are we going to make more money by putting this thing by by changing the core values of this uh, in order to get it? on screens in this region because like at some point there like it doesn't fucking matter for call of duty call of duty is doesn't have important lgbtq plus uh like representation in their fucking media but yeah. like something like what's a good example um life is strange isn't gonna be on, on the often and they're like yeah we're not gonna fucking ship to china because it's not gonna be fucking worth it for us yeah it's so not like play in china it, anyway. everyone's worried about this but no mass media is going to have anything that is of such important substance that if it gets neutered and sent to China, it doesn't fucking matter. 
Yeah, yeah. I think this is one of those things that I want to keep my eye on because it could be heading in the wrong direction, but thankfully we're not there yet. Yeah. Um, well, folks, I, I, like honestly, like mm-hmm. sorry, I just did one more thought on this because I had said in my head, like if if Overwatch mattered culturally in video games as much as it should have because it could have been everything um and blizzard ruined it because they're blizzard um this would be a big thing because they have a lot of lgbtq plus characters and they have a lot of diversity and stuff going on there uh and it's a game that has big multiplayer and big international appeal and guess what it doesn't fucking matter because that game is shit (laughs) and on that news folks uh overwatch is shit and we're ending it with local chat Folks, thank you so much for watching. Chris, thank you for joining us. Where can people find you and all the beautiful, beautiful content that you make? Uh, you can find me on the beautiful slopes of Gilinor. Uh No, you can find me on uh, twitter.com slash chris. You can also find all the uh, jokes we do, dick or otherwise, on uh, youtube.com slash team or team on all the socials. We're, we're there. We're hanging out. Uh, you can check out a race attorney show or a Pokemon show, all that stuff. We make content about video games. Thank yes, you so go. Thank you so much for being on. Uh, I'm Ian Gibson. You can find me at Think Gibson on Twitter, and you can find Subpixel content at Subpixel Team on Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, Instagram, and TikTok. You can also find us at subpixelfilms.com. We've got a brand new documentary out on Skatebird. And folks, we've got something special coming up on Saturday. It's episode two oh. of Spooky Pixel 2021. We're doing things a little bit different because quite frankly, I can't take scary games anymore. We may be streaming a movie with Twitch Watch Party, so check us out 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we're not sure what movie yet, so pay attention to our Twitter, but either way, we'll see you.